Hello, I am going to perform some experiments uh, trying to measure or perform EMI RFI pre-compliance with uh, this TechBox TBTC1 uh, open side TEM cell and my Regal DSA815 spectrum analyzer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this product right here. This is a uh, pedal interface. So when musicians um, have a bunch of uh, guitar effects down on the floor, this circuit board is a method to attach all of these unit, units together into a rack. This device has a uh, switching DC power supply that provides a uh, full uh, galvanic isolation between uh, the input and output of this power supply. And this is the switching power supply right here. Now, uh, why I'm looking at this is this product was submitted to a registered testing lab and it did pass. And this is, let me see, there we go. If you can read this, this is the plot from the test lab. And the test lab did identify a couple of points that um, got close. They're uh, five to 10 dB below the limit lines, but uh, these are peaks coming from my board. Uh, this one peak is around 33 megahertz at uh, 32 uh, dB microvolts. This other peak is at 216 megahertz at 36 dB microvolts. And our span is 30 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. This is with the uh, antenna in the vertical orientation. And uh, this is with the antenna in the horizontal orientation and we can see that we have this still have this 216 megahertz peak but we don't have that 33 megahertz peak in the horizontal orientation so what we do is we place this board on the bottom of the TEM cell right in the middle and what's nice about the TEM cell is I move this around uh, we don't see a whole lot of uh, variance in the, the measurements. Okay, I've zoomed in on the uh, spectrum analyzer and you can see that we are picking up some noise. Uh, this is the ambient noise in my environment uh, as the system is not powered on. We will look at this in a bit to uh, see if we can minimize this. The power input to this device is via a RJ45 type cable. And I'm just gonna plug this in. And I have the ends shorted together. And we're gonna see that uh, I pick up some uh, more noise. Units not powered on, but uh, we can see that we have a little bit more noise and because the uh, power uh, cable is acting as an antenna. And now the uh, shorted power input cable is uh, disconnected. Here's my actual power cable. And uh, I've got this little bump in here where I have a couple of ferrite beads and uh, a 10 microfarad and a 0.1 microfarad ceramic cap and a 10 microfarad and a 0.1 microfarad cap on either side of the bead to uh, try to reduce the amount of noise getting into the device under test uh, when it's powered. Okay, here we go. We're gonna turn on the power the power is supplied by my uh, Regal 
DP32 linear power supply. I'm going to turn the power supply on and we can see that uh, I do add some uh, noise. And again, what we're, what we're going to try to do here is see if we can make any correlation between what we're seeing here with the TEM cell versus these measurements that were done at a registered test lab in a anechoic chamber. I'll show some of my setups for this uh, test. I will reset the spectrum analyzer. I'm first going to change my start frequency to 30 megahertz. I stop frequency to 1 gigahertz. Amplitude I'm going to set to dB microvolts. And turn the attenuator off. Turn on the preamp. Let's get the vertical scale to a nice even number. I'm going to go to 70 dB microvolts. And you can see I've got the, the remembered the display line here, display limit, or whatever, I don't, I don't know what it's called. Um, and it's set currently for 40 dB microvolts. Uh, tech box in their um, manual says to be leery of signals uh, over 40, uh, 40 dB microvolts. And let's see what else do we want to do. Let's uh, go to detector, positive peak, that's good. Let's go to our resolution. Let's go to 100 kilohertz and video bandwidth of 3 megahertz. Uh, the idea is that we put this product, we put it in the middle on the bottom and as uh, you know what's nice about the TEM cells I can move this around and the readings don't uh, substantially change whereas if you had you know a probe and you were sniffing around the board things are going to dramatically change. Here is my base noise and uh, the power supply is connected but not powered on. So let's get a reading here. So I'm going to trace pass fell and I'm going to blank all. I'm now going to max hold this and we'll record this. We'll let this run through a few sweeps. and freeze it. Go to our next trace and now let's turn on the power supply and max hold again and freeze it. Okay so you can see that we've got you know this this purple line through here this is noise that I'm generating on my board. Uh, all of this is not uh, present. This is background information, you know, background noise. Let's move our marker and uh, let's take a look at some of these peaks. Okay, so here's uh, one of our peaks of concern and this is saying 224 megahertz. Let's look at this and we can see that there was a peak at 216 megahertz and a peak at approximately 33 megahertz that the certified test lab was concerned with. There's also a kind of a couple of other peaks here. So let's see, let's look. So we can see another peak there, another peak there, and let's come down to this peak which is measuring uh, 40 to 43 megahertz. And so yeah, I think we can make a correlation that we can see these peaks here. And uh, just as kind of a fluke, I think the, you know, these values are 
the uh, are similar here, but the uh, DC switching power supply inside this product, um, uh, the switching frequency is determined by a capacitor that is kind of sloppy, and so from unit to unit these peaks will shift back and forth uh, somewhat. Uh, I should have mentioned that this uh, DC to DC switcher is a uh, isolated, uh, so there's a total galvanic isolation between the input and output, and uh, it's about uh, 10 watts. Next thing we're going to try is we're going to install a shielding bag over the temp cell to see if we can uh, get a reduced uh, background noise. Uh, I should point out the uh, setup here on the temp cell before I bury it in the bag. Uh, there's two ports. They're the same. The uh, this uh, uh, this port is terminated with a 50 ohm load. Uh, this is a massive uh, power rated load. We, we don't need that uh, if we were doing our uh, a susceptibility test we would need a large load over here. And here's our other port which goes to the spectrum analyzer. This is a uh, DC block and then I go through this adapter over to my spectrum analyzer. Uh, when I purchase this uh, TEM cell it did come with the DC block and it also came with the uh, load which was nice. Let's get a new uh, background reading. So here's our background reading without the uh, shielding bag. Freeze it. Now let's install the bag. TechBox uh, recommends that the shielding bag should be grounded and uh, that makes sense and they recommend that you can just uh, make that connection here at the DC block. So that's what we're going to do. This uh, Velcro is pretty aggressive, kind of scares me when I'm pulling it apart and I'm going to tear something. We're going to put that right there and seal this up good. They uh, also suggested to put some clips right here to help uh, make sure that that's sealed up nice and tight and uh, that we're getting a connection around that uh, DC block which we've done. Okay, We are now sealed up and let's make a, uh, another measurement. Let's go to our second trace and max hold it. and freeze. Okay, so we can see that that made a very significant uh, change. Uh, all of this stuff through here is gone. Through here is gone. Most of that's gone. So yeah, if you were looking for a signal down in the dirt, uh, the shielding bag would uh, be significant. Here's an interesting observation. Uh, the system is all zipped up here and uh, I have the power supply connected but it's not turned on. So we're looking at our background noise uh, inside the shielding bag. Now you'll notice I've really zoomed in here uh, rather than a 10 dB per uh, division. I am now at 3 dB per division and I lowered my reference level to 40 dB microvolts. And right now the filter is just outside the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the hook and loop connectors, the Velcro connectors. So Watch this, and I'm going to slide this in a little bit. 
that's the filter about let's put it in about halfway through the velcro so we can see that some of this noise is uh, decreasing and if I go a little farther in so there's a little bit of a difference there and as I've played around with this a little bit it seems like I get the quietest measurement when that filter is right in the middle of the velcro interesting well what else can I show uh, with my setup here uh, I still have my earth grounded aluminum plates that are basically the full size of the table and are underneath my uh, cardboard here and well in conclusion what can I say uh, I believe the combination of the spectrum analyzer and the TEM cell uh, works well and can provide very accurate relative measurements and uh, if you've done several measurements or several tests with uh, different products and have data from a certified lab that you can compare against I think eventually you'd be able to make some rough uh, absolute measurements of your product uh, and uh, if you're looking for some signals that are kind of down in the ambient noise the addition of a uh, shielding bag could be uh, very beneficial uh, again this is the tech box uh, TB TC1 uh, TEM cell that I bought probably a year or so ago and I've used a few times and it's it's worked out quite well uh, I'm actually looking forward to trying a couple of experiments where I do some uh, radiated susceptibility testing the uh, shielding bag is the TBSB7040 well that's it uh, if you like this uh, hit subscribe I'm just curious to see how many subscribers I can get and if you have any questions, uh, just uh, let me know. Thanks. Bye.